this unit is about thin film interference. In addition to its technological importance, thin film interference makes beautiful colors through an effect called dichroism. So if you cause the interference to happen with white light, you get colors. You may remember the word dichroism from the learning sequence on polarization. We said dichroism was when you had anisotropy in absorption based on the direction of polarization of the light. But we said it had two meanings, and the other had to do with color. So this is the other meaning. Anything that separates white light into colors is usually called dichroism. Uh, if you Google the word dichroic, Google image search the word dichroic, you'll get hundreds of images of uh, artwork and jewelry and products and things that claim to be dichroic. And a few of them actually are. Okay? A lot of them, I don't think they are. And a lot of them look highly photoshopped. So I'm going to show you how to tell uh, when you're dealing with something that's colored due to pigments and absorption and something that's colored due to dichroism. So this is a filter. And the only reason it has color is there's little dyes and ions and impurities absorbing light in the glass. And you can tell because when we look at the color on the lamp and if you turn it, there's no difference. I mean, it looks the same color as you turn it through these angles. And a hallmark of dichroism and interference is that the color depends on the angle. So now here, I have a little dichroic panel, which I acquired when Sue Sunny Park was here at Rice. So she makes art uh, based on sort of physics-y effects, or she uses uh, materials and interesting optical effects in her art. And she had an installation here called Unwoven Light, which used thousands of these dichroic panels. So they're based on thin film interference. And you can see here, if we look at it, it's one color, and as you turn it, it changes color. Okay, so that way, that way, you can see the color go through all different colors as the angle changes. So this panel is definitely dichroic. And if you look below, you can see a crazy talk they asked me to give about that artwork. I'll put a link down there. So all this beauty, what are physicists going to do to explain all this wonderful, beautiful effects? We are going to calculate the reflections from a dielectric slab. That's as pretty as we can make it, unfortunately. The reflections from a dielectric slab. OK, so here is our dielectric slab. Oh, and it's so beautiful. Look at it. And ooh, it has an index in. How lovely. And then outside, we'll say the index is 1. OK, so now let's think about We've done reflections back in uh, the dreaded LS3. And we thought about light coming in. It comes with some um, irradiance I naught. And just to give that a number, we're going to say it's 1. I don't care what the units are. It comes in with an irradiance of 1. And it comes in at some angle. And we know what happens. Some of it reflects, and some of it transmits like that. And we know how to calculate uh, what's going to happen. So let's say, let's first do it for small angles. For small angles, r is equal to, in this case, uh, 1 minus n over 1 plus n. Right? If you let theta be 0, that's what you get for r. Um, and then big R is just that squared. Right? 1 minus n over 1 plus n squared. So I think we've done this before. If you're just talking about air and glass, you get 1 minus 1.5, about minus 0.5 over 2.5. That's 0.2. You square it, and you get about 4%. So you get a 4% reflection in terms of the irradiance. So if this comes in at 1, this is uh, 0 0.04. Okay. And that reflects, and there's not much dependence on wavelength, so not much interesting happens. But then we could say, well, what goes down? Well, what goes down must be 0.96, right? roughly. It would be going in, because you lost 4%, so that must go down. And then you calculate this reflection. This reflection actually is also um, about 4%. Right. So the amplitude or the irradiance of that ray, I've got it about uh, 0.0384. Because yeah, it's only 4% of 0.96, speaking approximately. And then you've got to do the transmittance uh, to come out. And that's pretty big. But then it's only of that. So it's about 0.0369 is what you get. If 
you do all this for normal incidence. So when you do this reflection off of a thin film, meaning it has a top surface and a bottom surface, and you consider both surfaces, you actually get two beams coming out. And their power is roughly the same. Okay? When you're doing theoretical physics, you can say 4 equals uh, 3.69. Nah, they're the same. Right? So let's call this one R1 percent. R2 equals 3.7 uh, percent, more or less. And then you could be real smart and say, well, hey, what about R3, right? So you could say, well, let's calculate this one, and it goes up, and you get another one, and then it goes down, and it goes up, and you get another one. And yes, you do get a much more, but their amplitude is really small, right? Because here, uh, this is now 0.034, and the reflection is 4%, 4%, so it's, it's knocked really small. So it's really those first two reflections that give you most of your light, okay? So R3, 4 is about 0%. Okay? So what we want to do is consider the interference of these two beams. And what we're going to find is it depends on angle, it depends on wavelength, lots of interesting aspects to this is what creates all the pretty colors.